It's like she said, you know, once while you get to thinking, Lord, you ever going to help me? <laughs> it's like I've been saying for the last few weeks, you know, it's one thing to have a head knowledge about faith. Right. But a whole other thing to have a heart knowledge. This man in that, in that lesson this morning, he finally just threw his hands up and said, Lord, yeah. I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah. 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 I believe everything in this book. Yeah. And I believe and if you're here today, you, most of us believe everything in that book. Yeah. But will he do it for me? Amen. That's, that's the whole thing right there. Will he do it for me? Yeah. Amen. If you have your Bibles, take your Bibles and let's go to Malachi chapter 3. While you're turning, I uh, want to remind everyone that freedom is in revival this week. Uh, preacher Kevin Smith is going to be there uh, tomorrow night and Tuesday night. Uh, so if you can, uh, go out and support that. Uh, also, our camp meeting is coming up. Our, our, our area wide camp meeting. Preacher Buddy C was supposed to uh, preach for us, but Preacher Buddy is going through those treatments for the, for the cancer. <coughs> so we've got Preacher James Childress and Preacher Kevin Johnson is going to be preaching for our camp meeting. Uh, that's going to be here starting the 25th of this month. We'll be much in prayer about that. Amen. Malachi chapter 3. If you're there, let's stand in honor of God's word. <laughs> There, say amen. Amen. Verse 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. I want to, I want to use that word right there where God said his, as he makes up his jewels. Uh, I preached a message several years ago on, uh, uh, about this and kind of uh, added to this a little bit this morning. But you pray for us and let's just get our minds on the Lord this morning. Amen. God, we love you and we come to you in Jesus' name. God, I thank you, Lord, for the songs and the testimony, Lord. God, I thank you, God, that I know, God, without a shadow of doubt, Lord, you still answer prayer, God. Lord, I thank you, God, that you are there for us, Lord. And God, I believe with all my heart I'm where you want me to be this morning, God. Have your hand on us right now, Lord. If there's one in this building, God, that's not where they need to be, Lord. Lord, in some way, grown cold and unconcerned or in a backslid state, God. God, help them to get on this altar. God, help them to be honest today, God. I say, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, if there's one that's never been saved, God, help that one in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, when I talk about uh, jewels, God's jewels, <clears throat> I'm talking about something that God created. <clears throat> As I was studying and thinking about this, you know, I found something, and, and I was just going to kind of focus out as an introduction this morning. How many remember back in the mid-70s they came out with that mood ring? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You know, you wear that thing and the temperature or whatever, it would change colors on your hand or whatever, or the necklaces. I ain't talking about that kind of jewel. See, that's a man-made. In 1975, two scientists created that ring, or created that stone. And, that, and let me just throw this out there. If you're one of those Christians, it seems like your mood just always changes. Won't you just come on and get on this altar right now? Well, that is a man-made thing. That ain't God-made. God wants us to be constant. When a diamond comes out of the ground and that diamond is falling, when, it, when it's where it's supposed to be, it's, it don't change. If an emerald comes out, it don't change. We're supposed to be the same no matter what. And this, is, this ain't the sermon. This is just introduction. Amen. We're supposed to be the same everywhere we go. If I meet you today, you ought to be the same when I meet you tomorrow. If I meet you the next day, you ought to be the same. You ought not be changing. Your mood ought not go up and down. I, I, I don't understand Christians. It's one minute you see them on the mountaintop. Next day you see them Timmy down in the valley. And they just ain't happy about nothing. They're never smiling. Folks, I'm telling you right now, when God comes into your life and God puts you in that jewelry box that I'm getting ready to preach about, I'm telling you, there'll be a change in your life. You'll sparkle. You'll shine. You'll be the same all the time for Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Introduction. <laughs> I want you to notice some things about some jewels, though. 
They just don't appear. A real jewel has to be found. We sang a song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Understand something today. I want you to go and get, you know, the preacher Billy preached a message at one of our camp meetings about how the Bible is written so that you and I as humans can understand it. You, you've never been lost as far as God is concerned. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, Behold, all souls are mine, and the soul of the Father, so the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinned, it shall die. God knew exactly where every last one of us was. Hey, before you got saved, God knew where you were at. Before you got to come to the knowledge of, of Jesus Christ, God knew where you were at. But every jewel, I thought about this as I was thinking on this uh, this message. Uh, you know, right down below my house, hell gold mines come in and bought us a lot of, a lot of land. Right there, close to where really stays. What happens is when they find the gold, they go in and buy that land up. God said you already belong to Him. He knew where you were at. If you're here today, you understand this, and you're not where you need to be with God, God knows exactly where you're at. You're not hiding from Him. You can't hide from God. He sees everything. The Bible says that God said, all souls are mine. Hey, that's before. That's saved, lost. That's in, out. That's what is up. And God says, all souls are mine. That means God knows everything about us. But thank God, God found us one day. And you have never been lost concerning God. Everybody, we all say that. People say, well, I'm glad I found Jesus. You didn't find Jesus. Jesus ain't never been lost. Jesus found you because He knew exactly where you were. Not only do jewels have to be found, but jewels have to be mine. The Bible says in John chapter 3, Verse 16 and 17, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world, and He condemned the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Somebody has got to go, and even though you know where the diamonds are at, even though you know where the emeralds are at, even though you know where the rubies are at, somebody's still got to go and get it. I'm glad that one day Jesus said, I was going to get it. One day Jesus stepped out of glory, put on a robe of flesh, came down to this earth, and walked around for 33 and a half years. He did no wrong. He was perfect in every way. And the Bible said that he went to Calvary. And glory to God at Calvary, he mined every jewel at Calvary. He gave the very best at Calvary. He went through the hard places that nobody else could go through, Brother Robert. At Calvary, he gave everything he had so that he could mine the jewels that were down there. He knew exactly where Skip Parker was. He knew exactly where West was. He went down. He cleared out the mud and the muck and the mire. And went right to where you were at. And glory to God, he mined you. Amen. Say, preacher, I ain't saved. Guess what? He still paid the price. He still paid the price for you and for me. And if you're here today, you understand something. Jesus not only found you, but Jesus mined you. Now see, everybody ain't what they're supposed to be. When you, when you pull a jewel, you pull one of those diamonds or an emerald or a ruby or one of those uh, sapphires, you pull that out of the ground, it don't look too good. It's got to be cut. Yeah. And now we get to the part of the sermon that the Christians don't like. Oh, I like it when they found me. I like it when they mind me. But guess what? That jeweler that works with that thing, Melvin, he's going to set it up and he's going to look at it. He's going to look at it. And, and, and every, every one of them, Brother Ralph, you know this, every one of them's got flaws. So what that, what that jeweler does Brother Bill, he takes it and cuts around that flaw. Yeah. Come on, man. He cuts it just like he wants it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought about Brother Wayne. I thought about this as I was as I was thinking on this this morning. There ain't no diamond ever stood up and said, "Hey, I want to be this." Uh -huh. I want 
No, it ain't left up to you, Dale. It's left up to him. Preacher Mark, he's the one that's cutting. He's the one that does it. He's the one that's testing there. He says, we need to take off this little edge right here. And he takes that, he takes that hammer and that chisel and, that, and, and he cuts it right. He is a jet. He knows how to hit it. He ain't going to lock off no more than needs to be knocked off. He ain't going to tear off anything that don't need to be torn. Hey, and if he's knocking something off of you today, you ought to just raise your hands and say, go away to God. He's making me what I need to be. He knows what he's doing. Hold on. We need to get our minds made up. Hey, I'm just going to let him cut me. I'm going to let him do with me what he wants done with me. Because every time I try, I always mess it up. I got to be cut. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work to good to them that are called who love the Lord who are called according to His purpose. It didn't say all things were good. Sister Juanita was praising the Lord this morning. You know, in our minds, if we ain't careful, somebody said, well, how in the world did she pray the Lord? They had to cut her tip off. <laughs> but you notice this morning, them other two ladies didn't hold her hand. <laughs> stepping down off these steps. Because God knows what needs to be cut away. I'm just, that's just a physical thing so we can halfway understand it. But spiritually, every last one of us has got things in our life. And God is doing His very best to cut it away. So that glory to God say somebody got to hold your hand when it comes time spiritually for you to walk down steps so that you, hey, if you let God cut it out, then you can get your shout back. Amen. 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 But then not only they got to be cut, but they got to be polished. They got to be polished. Most people don't understand polishing. Most people think about polishing, they think about getting that little cherry cloth and just kind of rub it. That ain't exactly how it happens. That jeweler takes sometimes a very abrasive material yeah. and puts on it. Yeah. And scrubs. Yeah. I thought about it as I was studying on and thinking about this point this morning. The Bible talks about King David in 1 Samuel chapter 17. How that King David was getting ready to fight Goliath. And the Bible says that David, when he tried on the armor, none of that would work. The Bible says that David went down to the brook. And David knelt down. And the Bible says that David picked out five smooth stones. Come on, man. Smooth stones. And I thought about, you know, how many years maybe those, those rocks had been in that water. And that water running across them and, and tumbling in all that sand and tumbling in the clay and bouncing off those other rocks, Billy. It took years for that to get smooth. It took years for that to where David could put it in that sling. You don't need, see, you don't need something that's got a lot of edges if you want it to fly straight. You gotta have something that's smooth. And when David put it in that sling and David slung it at that giant, it hit the mark that it was aimed for. Glory to God, and it did God starts polishing on us. And when God starts moving with us, and God starts trying to work with us, God's got an aim for you. God's got a price for you. God's got a place for you. Amen. A lot of us, we don't like that part. A lot of us, God starts cutting and polishing. We get mad. And we want to quit on God. Well, I just ain't going back. You want to blame it on the preacher. You want to blame it on the deacons. You want to blame it on this one. You want to blame it on that one. And all it is is God trying to polish you. And God trying to cut you. And God trying to get you where you need to be. But you're too hard-headed to realize that. You see, after, after all, the, all the polishing and after all the cutting, after all of that is done, and, and, and the jeweler, uh, Clint, gets it just like he wants it. Then he says, i got to set this in something. So he takes that, 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 that jewel, Brother Robert, 
And whether it be a necklace or a bracelet or a ring, and he places it in there. And he secures it, Wes. And I, I can just see a jeweler. You know, if I was a jeweler, I, I'd brag on my own work. <laughs> Emily, I can just see him uh, as, he, as he sits it in there and he takes it in and he secures it. Because if you don't secure it, it'll fall out. What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm telling you right now, folks. Let me tell you something. I'm free will Baptist to the bone. Yeah. But Larry, I, I'm free will Baptist to the bone. <coughs> but I'm secure. Yeah. 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 I'm secure. God's got me right there. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, ain't enough devils in hell and they, they, they can come down and get you out of God's hand. If you get out of God's hand, it's because you want it to get out. If you, ain't, if you ain't where you need to be today with the Lord, it's your fault. Don't blame the jeweler. He set you. He secured you. He had you in the right place. And I'm telling you right now, when He sets you and He secures you, just go ahead and shine where He's got you at. Glory to God. He said, if you're a member of this church, why don't you just go ahead and shine for Jesus? Yeah. Quit dropping and belly aching and crying and carrying on and say, hey, I'm going to shine for Jesus. They might not be going the way I think it ought to go, but I'm going to shine for Jesus in the hell. Everybody can't be a preacher. Everybody can't be a choir director. Everybody can't be a deacon. But you can be where God sets you. And you can shine where God sets you. I tell you right now, folks, I, I believe with all my heart that God placed me in Lancaster, South Carolina. In the top of my mind that God didn't do that. And it's my job, Wes, it's my job to shine where he's got me. Not only, now listen, when they're sitting there, they're everything just right. Now it's time to be displayed. How many of you have ever been to a jewelry store? You know, most of the time, I don't know if I've ever been to a jewelry store where they have diamonds and all that, you know. Most of the time they have them on a dark background. Have them on that dark background, background, Brother Barry, so they'll stand out. That's when we're supposed to shine the best. When the background's dark. When things ain't going like you think they ought to do. When things, when things, when you think that things should be different, but they're not. And I, you know, I thought about it in Sunday school this morning. That this man, he, he, the Bible said that he, he brought his disciple, he brought his son to, to the disciples. There were nine of them. And from that point to when Jesus comes down, doubt had creeped in. See, it's when doubt creeps in that you need to stand up and say, "I'm gonna go ahead and shine anyhow." It's when the hard times are there that you need to stand up and say, I'm going to shine in here. This one over here might not shine. But this is where God placed me. So I'm going to shine in here. Come on, preacher. Think about preacher Mike. He's shining. Amen. The backdrop is dark, but he's still shining. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he might not be preach every week, but when God allows it, and he made it the full kid, come on, man. he's shining. Amen. Amen. And somebody can get up on it in the morning time when the doctors have taken their toe off and shine. Amen. And the rest of us gripping and belly aching and carrying on. And we can't even shine when everything's going good. I'm telling you, folks, we ought to shine when the background is dark. We are, we are on display this morning for everybody to see. We are on display this morning. And there have been people watching you. There have been people that have let people down because they, they didn't shine when the background was dark. And they let them down and they lost all confidence in them. We ought to shine. 
Then I got to think about it. Somebody comes along and Wes, and they see that diamond or they see that ruby or whatever. They say, I like that one. They pull that thing out and they put it on that finger and they wear it. That's a witness. I got this, this patrol ring I wear. A lot of people think it's a college ring. No, I didn't go to college, I was smart enough. <laughs> It's got a badge on it, it's a highway patrol. Yeah. And I wear it for Jamal Bonner. Because I was honored to be a state trooper. Yeah. Yeah. And when I shake people's hands, it's a witness. Yeah. You ought to be that witness yeah. for Jesus. Amen. Excuse me, you ought to be a diamond everywhere you go. But then you ought to be a diamond everywhere you go. Now let me go back to my introduction. We got too many mood rings. And you ain't being a diamond everywhere you go. And my last thing is this. Every once in a while, Timmy, those rings have to be worked on. I don't care. How much you pay for it. I don't care how big or how little it is. Every once in a while, you have to take back that jewelry and get that all tightened up or like that. Every once in a while, you have to take back that jewelry. The hand used to work at the jewelry store. And they had this thing that would put those rings in and they would vibrate and clean them. Scott, every once in a while, you got to go back and get clean them. Yeah. Hey, come on. Come on. Come on now. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all. Amen. All unrighteousness. Amen. Let me tell you something, folks. There have been times that I've had to get on this altar, right here. I ain't talking about White Savannah. I'm not talking about Piney Road. I'm not talking about the altar at Liberty, Free Will Baptist Church, where I am the pastor of the church. Every once in a while, Brother Wayne, I've had to come down this altar and let God pick me up and put me in that Bible that he's got glory to God and shake me a little bit and clean me a little bit and take me out and tie me up on this side and tie me up on that side so that when I go out of the door I'm still secure glory to God that's the problem right there most of us we don't want to come down an altar and admit we got problems we don't want to come down an altar and admit that I need help but I need help I need to be cleaned Amen. I need to be straightened up let me tell you something that's how come I ain't fell on my face why Robert ain't fell on his face. That's how come I ain't out of church. Because I realized that I need help, man. And I don't... Have you ever, how many of you ever took your, your rings or whatever jury and got them clean? And straightened out and, and, and worked on a little bit? Man, you got that thing back? You see, you That thing looks better than it did there. It looks better than it did when I brought it in here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. I don't want to even have to preach right there. I don't want to have to say one more word right there. It looks better than it did when I brought it in here. I'm telling you, folks, if you get on this altar this morning and you let Jesus get a hold to you, you let Jesus start working on you, you let Jesus mend you a little bit and polish you a little bit and clean you up a little bit, you look a whole lot better leaving out than you did coming in. Amen. But you got to be willing like the man in Sunday school to admit. Basically what he said is, Lord, i got a problem. I believe, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. I got a problem. And I need help. You see, one of these days, God's going to call time. God's going to come down and pick up this here emerald right here. Pick up this diamond right here. Pick up this ruby. This sapphire. And a topaz. And get all of us together. 
take us up there and put us in his jewelry box. Yeah. 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 To be on display for nobody else but him. That's what this is all about. He's getting us ready to be placed in that jewelry box. And unless you're willing to be honest, you won't never make it to that jewelry box. Jesus' name. Amen. Will that stand? Brother Robert sings. 